Two of the heavyweights in the mixed team gold medal match, India and Mexico. And we'll talk about that momentarily. Mixed team format, two athletes, one male, one female per country. We use the set system for recurve mixed team competition to determine the outcome. Two points for winning a set, one point for splitting a set. The first of five total points is your winner. And first out of the tunnel here for the mixed team bronze medal match, the team from France. And of course, we're talking about Jean-Charles Valadon and Sophie Planet, very interesting duo right here. Mm -hmm. The veteran Jean Charles and 17-year-old Sophie Planet. Yeah, she was at the, the Youth World Championships in um, Yankton, South Dakota, earlier this year. Saw her shoot there, and now she's here competing on the world senior stage. And I believe she was in Copenhagen as well. So she's a very strong shooter for her age. So good for her. She picked up a mixed team bronze medal at Yankton at the World Youth, world youth Championships. 17 years of age, although she started shooting when she was seven years old, so she's a veteran by now. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of years to be shooting for the, her age already. And Jean-Charles, 26 years of age, 15th in the world. So that's the team from France. They'll be taking on the team that Crispin just mentioned, the team from Belarus, a team that beat the United States in a quarterfinal shootoff 5-4 to four, before losing to Mexico 5-3. to three. By the way, France got here with a 6-2 quarterfinal win over Germany, then a 5-3 to three loss to India in the semifinals. But let's talk more about the team from Belarus, and that means talking about Anton Prilipov as well as his partner, Alena Kuznetsova. Kuznetsova, 30 years of age, not highly ranked, but a lot of experience, has two World Cup silver medals. She won those, a team and an individual medal, both in 2010 in Portage. Mm -hmm. And her compatriot there, Anton Prilipov, has been shooting for many years on the international circuit. I remember seeing him at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, and a strong shooter. At that shoot, he actually had beaten the uh, former Olympic champion, Simon Fairweather, um, who had won in 2000, and he took Simon out in, um, I don't remember exactly which round, but when they came together, he was the stronger shooter, which uh, shows the amount of depth that Belarus actually has in longevity in their athletes. And he's going to have two shots at a medal this afternoon. It could be the biggest day of his career. <laughs> Definitely in recent history, for sure. But uh, here we go with our bronze medal Hi, mixed team rounds. Sophie Plenix. 17-year-old, shooting from the left side. On target number two. Good start, that's what you're looking for. Start off with a solid shot. Jean-Charles. An even better shot. It's a very good uh, start for Team France. Let's see how Belarus starts off with these two arrows. Right now, light winds, overcast skies, flat lighting on those targets. I would say it's generally a perfect condition for shooting. That's a 9 or a 10 on the line. I Look think like it she looks like a 10. Yeah. yeah. Thank Who's goodness she's Silva. shooting a, a high enough poundage so she can bury her arrow to the, the barrel, the fatter part of the arrow, and catch that line. <laughs> Those arrows more susceptible to the wind and recurve. They aim at that target 70 meters away. Nine. And we have a tight score. So it's interesting to note that the practice field here on, uh, on the finals venue is um, about 90 degrees um, facing to this, this field. So we're not shooting exactly in the same direction. So I'm watching to see if there are any tendencies with uh, where the archer's arrows are landing. And so far, Ms. Planix has got two arrows that are right of center. And uh, Jean-Charles, even though his is still a 10, it's still slightly left. But I, I don't think that we're going to see with France right now that there's any tendency. These archers are also much more exposed to whatever winds there are than That's they right. are over on that practice range, which is surrounded by trees. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very protected. So. They, they have to get out here and read the wind and feel the wind as quick as possible. And do it on the fly. That one flies high. Yeah, so Belarus is starting with their first three arrows high of center. And France's average right now is still right of center. Grilipov can still salvage this set for Belarus. Looking for a 10. 
that gets the nine to tie it and split the set. <laughs> so both teams are showing tendencies for sure. Once again, I said that Belarus is shooting high, France is shooting a little bit right, and we've tied it up. So that's a really good uh, indication of the level of archers we have right now. There isn't one team that is severely better than the other team. We've got a pretty even match just after the first four arrows. I mean, like, it's not over until, a, until it's all over. But uh, Until somebody sings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, since we're tied, we're going to be going to France shooting first because they started out the match. They, uh, they were the higher ranked team, so they got to choose whether they wanted to start first or second, and they obviously chose first. Uh, some teams have different, or some archers or teams have different uh, mentalities on whether they shoot first or second in the first uh, end or set. Um, but this can have repercussions on if there is a tie. That means that you, you either shoot first or second, um, depending on when you chose to shoot the first end. Um, so yeah, we're going to be going to France shooting first. And um, I, f I find it interesting actually on the field of play right now that um, we're seeing a whole variety of different shooting styles on the archers right now. And so what I mean by that is we're going to watch Miss Plenex shoot her arrow end. I, I would like to say that she's got a very traditional style. So she's relaxed, she gets her alignment here and she draws straight back under her chin. She's pretty well in line, string touching the nose and the chin. It's high. Just barely touching the nose. Yeah, it's just on the tip of the nose. Just on the tip, yeah. And then we watch Jean Charles. And when he draws back, you can see that his Brings string hand down. comes right down to the collar of his Oh, well, we couldn't see it there. But Maybe it, on the next it, shot. It comes straight down, but then he, comes, he rises up into his, his anchor. And it usually works a little it, bit better than that. It does. But again, he's been shooting for so long and has done it for so many, so many arrows that uh, it just becomes second nature. Now we come to her, to Elena. And if you watch, the string actually doesn't touch her nose. It's only touching the chin, the center of her chin. but To the side of the nose. It actually, do, it doesn't touch. If you, if we get another shot of, uh, uh, like a, a front shot of her face, we'll see that there is no, uh, there is a big space between the string and her nose, and that's used as another reference point. And Prilipov has, I would say, the traditional type of style of archery where he just comes straight back into his face. String is, I'm, I'm guessing, touching his nose and doing the traditional anchor from the nose, touching the lips down to the chin, but. What this shows us is that it doesn't really matter what your form looks like, it's whether or not you can repeat it and uh, do it under pressure, just like you do uh, in practice. And that's what makes these archers the best archers on the field. And get the results, a result like that for Sophie Plenix. That's a very good group for her. So now maybe we'll get a chance to watch that draw by Jean Charles. Brings it down. There it is. And now up. So it's a solid set for France. 35 out of 40. And now Belarus can shoot two nines here and take this set. Right now we see that the string is not touching her nose. It's actually in front of her nose. Ah, Good shot. But it works. <laughs> she looks surprised. <laughs> and when I when I saw that shot go off, it didn't look like it had life. It didn't look like there was a lot of power behind it. So I was expecting that arrow to go low, which in fact it did because her arrows previous to this end have all been high, and her first arrow of this end was high. So it coming going low into the ten ring. Oh, that's gonna hurt. So that arrow went low, but for Miss Kuz Kuznetsova, Kuznetsova, it was lucky enough to catch a ten. That shot by uh, Krylipov lands in the seven ring. And, and we tied it up again. Yeah, another tie in the set, split the set points, and the match remains tied at two all. Now you've been out there so many times, Crispin, in situations like this. As many times as these archers, aside maybe from Sophie, who's 17 years of age, although she's been around, but do you ever get over those jitters early on? Does it take a set to get that worked out, get the butterflies out think, of the way, get the nerves settled down? Yeah, I think that's a little bit more personal for the archer. Um, there's some archers that can just walk onto the field and not be nervous at all. And then there's some archers that need to have that first set just to get the nerves calmed down, get used to the field, get uh, get their sight mark and everything. So it depends on who you're talking about. Um, for example, when I was shooting um, 
the bronze medal match at the World Championships, I came out a little bit anxious. I really wanted to get onto that field and feel the pressure, feel the crowd, feel everything that I could feel. Um, Just bring it on. Exactly. And so there, there's that mentality, and then there's other archers who are a little bit more timid on the field. Sophie Plenix aggressively stepping up to the shooting line as we begin the third set. Taking the first shot for France in this third set of a match that's tied at two all, and that veers off into the eight ring. So France needing a big shot now from Jean-Charles Valadon to balance out that eight. Taking his time. Jean-Charles lands in the eight ring as well, surprising. I'm looking on the field of play right now, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of wind going, except our wind prompter is saying 2.5 meters per second, now 1.8. It might be a little bit more wind on the field than we're seeing. And her it's over. Yeah. is off to the right as well. But she kept it in the gold rings. Kuznetsova. Shooting since she was 15 years of age, so she's been competing half her life. Prilipov, ranked 13th in the world, lands in the nine ring. Advantage, Belarus. So it pretty much goes without saying, but France really needs some tens here just to put the pressure on. That's the whole goal of our sport anyway, just shoot tens. Close, but not quite. I just say. You can hear his coach counting him down. It's a little bit of a shake going on there. Nine. And After a couple of shaky shots on the first two arrows, two stronger arrows, but it might not be enough. Mm -hmm. Belarus can easily take this set with a nine and an eight. So here we can see what I was talking about. No, t no contact between the string and the nose. Oh. Seven. Mm. So we need a 10 now from Belarus to take the set. It's a nine, we're gonna tie yet again. Filipov, ranked 13th in the world, averaging right around 9.1 points per arrow. Ten. There you go. There we go, and that's the set for Belarus, giving them a 4-2 lead. That's a, that was a really important shot for Belarus because keeping a, a tied match throughout the whole thing doesn't give you a little bit of uh, that, that little bit of confidence that you would like to feel mm -hmm. going into the final sets of the match. Could be a game changer. Could be a pivotal point of this match as Prilipov comes through with a ten on the final shot of the third set to put Belarus in the driver's seat, four to two. So. A lot to think about for Sophie Plenix and Jean-Charles Valadon. Jean-Charles has done well in team competition at Outdoor World Championships. Won a team bronze medal in Belek in 2013. Team silver in Torino in 2011 and another team silver in Korea in 2009. And a year ago here in Wrocław, took the individual bronze medal. Hi, Sophie. And now backed against the wall, he and Sophie Plenix. Backed into a corner, trailing 4-2, needing to win this set, cannot afford to split. Not anymore. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Laniac. Just back to the tip of the nose. That was a good shot. That was good. Hi, Jesse. What told you that shot was good? Well, on that her shot, release? It, she, there was no hesitation mm -hmm. while she was at full draw, and as she released it, um, it had life, it had movement, and it had flow. So when she came off the string, it was very smooth. We'll see if we can compare it to JC here. That was a little rough, but he got away with it. <laughs> he didn't look very happy when he released. Yeah, the, generally archers know as soon as that string has left their fingers where that arrow is going to be, whether or not that was a good shot. Um, so even though Jean-Charles looked like he didn't have a good shot, he has enough experience that uh, 
that he can uh, still guide that arrow to the middle even though it's uh, feeling like a bad shot. Kuznetsova with a solid shot, trying to set up Anton Prilipov. Prilipov. Oh, that was a flinch right there. Something distracted him, but he got it dead. Still put it in the center. That's that's experience right there. If you get a little distracted or your mind wanders a little bit at full draw, sometimes that can happen. Um, and right now the the archers um, are shooting with a little bit of a higher arousal level. Ooh, that's not going to help. That hurts. And what what happens is when you're when you're under more pressure, you start to hear things and see things and feel things that you wouldn't normally feel, see, or hear. Because you're just not as focused. Or you're too focused. Uh -huh. uh, so you'll be able to hear somebody opening a can of uh, soda behind you. He didn't look happy with that shot. And not happy about the situation he's in right now because France is at the mercy of Belarus. Kuznetsova and Prilipov in a position to put the match away with these two arrows. There's the first. And if I were a betting man, which of course I'm not. <laughs> There's a very good chance that Prilipov will be able to make this shot. But again, arrow hasn't been shot yet, so we can't say anything. And Tom Prilipov for the bronze medal, and there it is. Needed six to win. He gets the nine. It's over, and the bronze medal belongs to Belarus. Congratulations to both those archers showing their experience. And in this case, I think age won over uh, youth. But France is a young team, and they've got lots of promise and lots of hope. So. Uh, Good on them for the fourth place, but Belarus, very good, well-deserved bronze medal. We have the two very experienced archers in Elena Kuznetsova, 30 years of age, Anton Prilipov, 31 years of age, and Prilipov, he had gone a long time in his career without meddling, finally broke through earlier this summer, and now breaks through here with the bronze medal, and he could get more later on this afternoon in the individual matches. Yeah, he's going to be going to the bronze medal match, and uh, I think it'll be, for him, it'll be good because he's been on the field now. He's got the uh, kind of the first field jitters mm -hmm. out of the way, and uh, he can just go on to his bronze medal match a little bit more confident now. He's got a feel for the look, the sound, the sights, the wind, the light.